Trigger Spoons, Trigger Spoon Magnums, Trigger Spoon Pros, Trigger Spoon Juniors, Speed Spoons, Speed Spoon Pros. Looking for spoons for your trout fishing adventure? Think FHS Spoons. You can check them out at fishhuntshoot.com. Howdy folks, Kel Kellogg here along with Lucy. Um, we are coming to you today from uh, Sugar Pine Reservoir. It's our local trout lake. Um, we fish here a lot, but I haven't fished here in quite a while. And uh, I'm noting that the water temperature is 46 degrees. So we're, we're dealing with some pretty chilly water. Totally doable, but pretty chilly. Um, this lake was last planted back in October, as far as I know. So there should be some holdover trout out here. Um, I assume that any trout that are left in the lake have kind of dialed into the, the local food chain. Um, this is mostly a bug lake, but there are some, there are some minnows out here. There is some bait out here um, in the form of small bluegill, uh, small bass, probably even some small trout because spawning does occur here at times. Um, I'm not starting out real fast. This is kind of my strategy for a cold lake, a lake that I haven't been to in a while. I do want to cover some ground, but I'm not starting out with speed spoons or even trigger spoons. I'm starting out with trigger spoon juniors um, on my uh, my shallow rod. I'm going to be running one that's silver that I put a little uh, purple nail polish on just to dress it up a bit, um, just, just for fun. And on my deeper rod, I'm going to go with a uh, hammered gold. So silver gold that's a good place to start if these colors don't work i'll break out the super bright stuff i'm going to move along at about 1.8 maybe 1.6 all the way up to two miles an hour um, these spoons are great for that the size is right for both large trout and pan sized trout so just going to kind of circuit the lake with these colors on i'm going to run one at 10 feet one at five feet and uh we will see what happens. I expect to get some results today, even though the water temperature is cold. And of course, I've got some worms and uh, flies and stuff like that. My, you know, my basic arsenal of baits. But uh, I am starting out with a pair of Trigger Spoon Juniors, and uh, we'll see what we can do. Let's you know, anytime you're at a lake when the water's below 50 degrees in California. Now, back east, they catch trout under ice, but if you're out here in California, um, where the fish are like us, they don't like it too super cold. Um, you know, you don't want to try to do too much. You don't want to go crazy fast, but I wouldn't start out crazy slow either. I wouldn't start out with a night crawler or something like that. You can always go to those tactics if you need to, but start out with something that you can cover water with, something that your instinct and experience tells you you can draw some strikes on. Um, watch your sonar unit, see what's available, watch the surface of the water, you know, take the temperature of the fish, so to speak, and then if you need to modify your approach, that's when you start modifying your approach. But again, start off with something that allows you to cover water. It's a small lake here. It's down, I would say, 20, 25 feet. Um, so we're going to be able to cover the whole lake here in maybe 40 minutes or so, and that should give us a pretty good idea of what's going on, give us a pretty good idea of what the day has, to, has in store for us. So let's get started. This is my shallow rod. Um, I'm running my standard three colors of lead core. Um, this one has a 50 foot top shot of 20 pound fluoro um, with a four foot, maybe 40 inch, eight pound test fluorocarbon leader. Um, running a troll and swivel as always, a cross lock snap, um, the spoon's attached to. And like I say, I wanna be just under the surface, maybe three to five feet down. So I'm probably gonna put out maybe a half or Three, color, three quarters of a color and uh, see what that does for us. The other rod we're gonna put deeper. I'm gonna put that down a full two colors. That rig is identical, but it is my deep rod. So the top shot is shorter. The top shot on that one is only 25 feet. So that right there is about, I'd say that's about three quarters of a color. So that should translate to maybe three, three feet deep or so. Now let's get that, that gold spoon out. That's one color. Getting into that second color. And uh, I haven't marked any fish yet. It's usually a good area of the lake. I fish along this, this wall here a lot. Catch a lot of fish along this wall. Um, you'll probably recognize this spot if you're a regular viewer of the channel.
that drag is perfect. Think lead core line's obsolete? Well, think again. Look at those big, beautiful rainbows. I got these fish while trolling 15 to 20 feet deep, and I didn't use a downrigger. If you don't want the expense or hassle of using a downrigger, pick up one of my yellow lead core rods in the Fish Hunt Shoot Production store and get ready to yell, fish on. Just like that, baby. Oh, fish on. Fish on the line. You might be off. He's playing with my phone. Let's see. Oh, no. We got, a, we got a fish on the line, on the deep line, 10 feet deep. I don't think I was trolling for five minutes. Awesome, awesome sauce. I'm not keeping any fish today, so we probably won't net this guy. I'm sure he's a, he's a pan-sized rainbow. He is a battler. Lucy's excited. It's the first fish we've actually caught in a while. We've been spending all our time guiding over at Collins Lake. So, good stuff. Right here by the dam at Sugar Pine Reservoir. Not a soul around. I see one truck up there, but I think those folks are out, out for a hike today. Let's see here. Oh, what a, what a pretty little fish. I'm just gonna lift him aboard, lift him aboard, let him go. You stay where you're at, Lucy. Right there, Trigger Spoon Jr. Oh, owie. <laughs> we'll get that guy back in the water. He'll be fine. He made a crash landing in the kayak. Good thing about, you know, I'm out here, it's cold, the water temperature is 46, the air temperature is like 31, and uh, cold water, that'll keep the trout just fine. <laughs> Stop. Oh my gosh, what a fighter. He, he's not big, but he's full of fight. We'll get him back in the water. Good Lord. <laughs> oh man. Well, I better reset everything. That was on the Hammered Gold Trigger Spoon Junior. It's a great choice for the high mountains. Um, I expected the, the shallow rod to get the action, but uh, that one came about 10 feet deep at 1.9 miles an hour. So, had, a, had another hit in there. I don't know if it was the same fish or a different fish, but uh, maybe we can put together a little pattern here have some fun. Fish on. Oh, fish off. Oh, fish on. Ah. Fish on. Pattern established. Right there. Had three hits coming through there. Right up against the dam here, so I better, better mind my P's and Q's, as they say. Pattern established, 10 feet, hammered gold. That is the ticket. So, Trigger Spoon's a killer, man. It's a killer. Fight the little pan-sized trout right there. He's swimming all over the place. Welcome aboard, sir. Whoa. Reeled him in a little short in the excitement. We'll get him back in the water. We'll get him out of here. Another little pan sized rainbow. He's an ex planter. Ooh, he's cold. He's cold. <laughs> there he is. What a feisty little guy. Back you go. Go get him, tiger. <laughs> well, if you know sugar pine, there's just a, a small bay here. Right in front of the dam. As soon as I turned into the bay, I got the first bite. Um, and then I got a fish about halfway in. I got that one about three quarters of the way to the face of the dam. We're only talking about a, a span there about oh, a couple hundred yards, I would say. So I would say that establishes the pattern. That's two fish, uh, multiple hits, and uh, it's working. It's working out. I love it when a plan comes together. So again, I'm gonna cut the lake down to size. 
I'm going to keep working the productive zone with the most productive lure. How long should you work a pattern until you decide, you know, the pattern's over, that spot has, you know, stopped giving up fish? When do you move on? And uh, in this particular instance, I've come through this 200 yard stretch three times. This is my fourth time. The first time through, I got two strikes and a fish. My second time through, I got two strikes and a fish. Um, my third time through, I got zero strikes. This is my fourth time through here. If I don't get a strike or a fish on this pass, I'm gonna open things back up. I'm gonna move out into the sun. I'm gonna move out into the main lake and see if I can establish another area that's kicking out fish. Um, you know, two passes with strikes and fish, two passes without strikes or fish in this limited area. Like I say, it's about 200 yards long. That's a, you know, that that's telling me that I need to kind of expand my territory, check out some other areas. And uh, I do believe on a cold day like this with 46 and a half degree water, about a 32 degree air temperature, I would think that areas that are exposed to the sun would uh, would have some more active fish in them. I might be wrong, but uh, that's going to be my next move. I'm going to work some areas that are out in the sunlight and uh, see if I can find some more active trout. But uh, I'm not quite through this zone yet. I hooked a fish back here on that second pass through. So we'll see see what this bay produces, and if it doesn't produce any more action, main lake, here we come. Wow, that sun feels good. So as a follow up, you know I should. I should talk about how long do you try to work a pattern before you give up on it. And uh, in the case of that bay back there, I was fishing a stretch of water that was about 200 yards long. My first pass through, I got a strike that didn't stick, and then I got another strike that produced a fish. Um, second pass through, I got two strikes and one fish. Third pass through, zero strikes. Fourth pass through, zero strikes. And you know, with these low water temperatures and the low air temperature, um, I opted to give up on that area that's in the shade and move out here into the main lake, into the sunshine. I think areas exposed to the sun are probably gonna have more active fish. We'll see if that's true. But uh, two passes through that limited area with action, two passes without action, and uh, that's about it for me. Undoubtedly, I'll go back in there later in the day once the sun gets on the water and see if there's more active fish back in there. But for now, two passes with zero action, it's time to move on and explore other areas of the lake. Um, you want to try to establish a pattern and you want to try to cut down the lake, but uh, when it becomes apparent that that's not working anymore, it's time to move on. And you know, that comes from experience instinct and what you have confidence in. So if you're fishing an area and you have a lot of confidence in it, you're gonna fish it better and inevitably you're going to catch more fish if you're fishing with a high level of confidence. But my gut was telling me two passes with no action, it was time to move on out here into the sun and explore some more areas. We'll see if, if that gut instinct pays off, but uh, you know, you gotta, gotta follow those cues. You gotta use your experience, kinda, Kind of just follow follow your feelings and right there fish on it paid off right out here in the sun so that was a good move same gold lure 10 feet though so that uh, that remains the pattern three straight fish on this rod all the strikes have come on this rod the other rod it's been fishing in the dead sea so i think uh, i think we've answered something there Oh, that's a nicer fish. Not a huge, definitely a nicer fish. Let's see if we can lift him aboard. Just like that. Oh yeah. Good deal. Get this guy back in the water. What a chromy, beautiful fish. Right there. Look nice and light. Give you a peek at him. Oh. oh, there was your peek. Off he goes. So, again, 10 feet deep, 1.8 miles an hour out here in the sun. Now I'm going to come right back through that area and see if I can pick up another.